Hello everyone. Welcome to General Sciences Biology Module 40. Today's lesson is on skeletal and muscular system of the human body. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Uh, the main organs and tissues of the musculoskeletal system in humans are bones, cartilage and muscles. These systems provide support and protection to organs, maintain structure of the body and help in movement of organs and limbs. They also store nutrients, for example, muscles store glycogen while bones store calcium and phosphorus. Further, bones also have the function of hematopoiesis, which is making of blood cells in their marrow. Now, bone is a highly mineralized tissue in which connected tissue is one third while mineral is two third portion. Apart from providing mechanical strength, the bone works as a homeostatic reservoir for ions such as calcium, magnesium and phosphorus, which means that uh, bones have a very important function in uh, regulating the acid blaze balance of the body. Now, there are uh, about 270 bones in the body. But before we come to that, uh, let's take a look in what the process of forming bones, which is known as osteogenesis or ossification. So we have 270 bones in a newborn baby and 206 in adult humans. So 94 uh, bones <clears throat> get fused as the baby grows. The total number of bones in the human skull uh, is for 29 and a face of a man is made up of 14 bones. Largest and longest bone in the human body is the femur or the thigh bone, whereas the shortest is the stirrup bone in the middle ear. Uh, now, bones are made up of three types of cells called osteoblasts, osteocytes and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts make the bone while osteoclasts break and remodel the osteous tissue. They create canal in bones. Osteocytes also provide support. Now, the intercellular part between osteocytes is made up of cysein protein and inorganic phosphates. Um, bony tissue is highly vascular and has a great regenerative power. And the only tissue which has a greater regenerative power than bony tissue is blood. Now, bones have narrow tubes called Harvison canals and Volkmann's canal, apart from a network of blood vessels. Next, we come to cartilages, which are softer elastic tissues that make joints between bones, rib cages. Um, Ribcage, ear, nose, bronchial tubes, invertebral disc, etc. Now, muscles. Human body has more than 650 muscles, which make up half of a person's body weight. Humans have three different kinds of muscles, skeletal, involuntary and cardiac. Now, um, skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles that hold the skeleton together, give the body shape and help with everyday movement. They are uh, striated or they look striped because they are made up of fibers that have horizontal stripes when viewed under a microscope. Now, these skeletal muscles can contract quickly and powerfully, but they tire easily and have to rest between workouts. Involuntary muscles are also made of fibers, but they look smooth because they are not striated and they are controlled by the nervous system automatically. Example would be the wall of stomach, the intestine, wall of blood vessels, etc. Now, smooth muscles take longer to contract than skeletal muscles, but they can stay contracted for a long time because they don't tire easily. Also, there are cardiac muscles. <clears throat> now, these are involuntary type of muscles found in the heart. Its rhythmic, powerful contractions force blood out of the heart as it beats. Cardiac muscle contraction is totally involuntary. That is, it has nothing to do with nervous stimulation or any conscious control. Next, we have sarcomeres and myoglobins. Now, sarcomeres are the functional unit of muscle fibers. Within them, um, blocks of actin and myosin molecules are placed in an organized manner. Now, uh, sarcomeres are the contractile units of muscle tissue. Uh, formed of alternating actin blocks, that is thin filaments, and myosin blocks, which are thicker filaments. Myoglobin is a pigment similar to hemoglobin, that is, it has a large affinity for oxygen. It is present in muscle fibers and it keeps oxygen bound and releases the gas under strenuous muscle work. Therefore, myoglobin acts as an oxygen reserve for muscles. If oxygen for hemoglobin or myoglobin is not enough to supply energy to muscle cells, Sometimes the cells begin to use lactic fermentation in an attempt 
to compensate for the deficiency. Now, lactic fermentation releases lactic acid and this substance causes muscle fatigue and predisposes the muscles to cramps. Joints. Joints are structures where two bones are attached so that bones can move relative to each other. So bones are held together at joints by ligaments um, which are fibrous um, connective tissues and joints are also classified into uh, three groups, immovable or fibrous joints, example would be the skull bones which do not move at all, slightly movable joints or cartilaginous joints such as invertebral disc or which have cartilage in between them. Um, freely movable joints or synovial joints, for example, limb joints. Now, synovial joints permit the greatest degree of flexibility and have the ends of bones covered with a connective tissue, which is known as the synovial membrane, filled with joint or the synovial fluid. Okay. Vertebral column in uh, vertebrae is the spinal cord, which is covered in uh, bones. So the spinal cord runs along the dorsal side uh, of the body and links the brain to the rest of the body. And in vertebrates like humans, uh, we have our spinal cords encased in a series of usually bony vertebrae that comprise the vertebral column. Our back is composed of 33 bones and uh, 31 pair of nerves, 40 muscles and numerous connecting tendons and ligaments running from the base of our skull to our tailbone. Between our vertebrae are fibrous elastic cartilages known as discs, um, which are also shock absorbers. That's all for this tutorial. If you like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel GK Today. Until the next tutorial, goodbye.